Who doesn't know it? It's happened to everyone. A little oversight, swapping plus and minus, and the colleague from the other shift has already break off the stylus. Now, I'll demonstrate how you can get the probe to work properly again. Welcome to another episode of Measurement Minutes. Today, I'll show you how you can proceed in such a case and get the probe working again. But for that, follow me into the machine. It's best if you grab a one and a half millimeter hex key. It fits perfectly into this cross drilling of the stylus. Be sure to pay attention here. We are working overhead. Loosen the whole thing, and now we can unscrew the stylus. Please note that, depending on your probe model, it might be necessary that we need a special tool here, an assembly tool. You'll always find that in your delivery package. The cool thing about our stylus is, the stylus we offer have a special centering diameter. This particular feature eliminates the need for realigning the runout each time there's a change of the stylus. Initially, I screw it in by hand manually. Now it's time to use my Allen key again for tightening. As the old saying goes, after tight comes loose. Since we have no way of knowing what the colleague on the opposite shift got up to, or if there was any sort of mechanical strain involved, we will now recheck the runout once more and make necessary adjustments if required. What you need for this is a lever gauge or a dial gauge, depending on what you have available. Before we can start with the alignment process, it's essential to first loosen and then carefully re-tighten the tension screw, which is positioned at the very top of the tool holder where our probe is located. This really enables us to align everything properly afterwards. A little helpful tip from my side, it's best to have two 1.5 mm Allen keys at your disposal and position them opposite each other on these tension screws for optimal grip. These are located up here in this flange with a total of four of these pieces in place, allowing you to adjust the probe precisely in the respective axis directions. Once on the Y axis and once on the X axis, it's really crucial to pay attention to the fact that the screws you do not intend to adjust should be slightly loosened by turning them about a quarter turn. This is necessary to ensure that they do not counteract our efforts and interfere with the adjustments. Next, we carefully place our two hex keys in position and as you observe the needle's movement now. We have the ability to adjust the probe accordingly. We're going to rotate the entire assembly by 180 degrees. Naturally, you can leave the keys in place securely during the rotation and diligently verify the runout on opposing sides in an alternating manner. We adjust this to be as minimal as possible. Ideally, it should be less than 10 millimeters. We proceed by rotating 90 degrees to address the remaining screws, ensuring that we make the exact same adjustments with precision here as well. If we have managed that, should our concentricity be less than 10 micrometers, we can clamp the whole thing again with the clamping screw at the top of the holder. Here's a bit of advice from me. Avoid turning the probe itself. If you do that, it could apply forces that might disrupt your settings or even make things challenging and difficult for you in the process. Thus, I would therefore always recommend turning the top of the tool holder. After the probe has been calibrated, you're ready to go again and your colleague on the opposite shift owes you a coffee. We're at the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Before I forget, stay process safe.